Hello, I'm Teacher Levy, and I am here to teach. Welcome to my class. Good day. Today we are going to discuss general psychology or Psycho 1. Psychology is a young science. So here are the learning objectives for this chapter. At the end of this chapter, the student is expected to number one, understand the meaning and the field of psychology. Two, trace the origin and development of psychology. Three, discuss the schools of psychology. Four, apply the different methods and techniques in the study of human behavior. And five, point out the division and branches and or subfields of psychology. So, what is psychology? Scientific definition of psychology. Psychology, in all definition, is a science that deals with the study of behavior of man and animal. This field of science is an objective and systematic study within the framework of underlying theories of behavior and cognitive or mental processes. This also includes the application of science to the different fields of psychology. If we are going to check the history of psychology, it involves the study of how the brain of the animals work. The experimental study of the behavior of the human beings are being tested first to the animals. Simply because some of the animals have the same structures of the brain just like human beings. However, on the latest study of the APA, psychology is the scientific study of the mind and the behavior. In this definition, the behavior and the mind being referred to is the human beings. The latest study of psychology says that psychology is now the scientific study of mind and behavior of human beings. So, how do we define science? A science is a well-organized knowledge. Well, as Brennan says, 1998, define science as the systematic acquisition of knowledge. So, a science is a system of acquiring knowledge, not just by a systematic thinking and observation. Liechtenstein defines system as a framework or a scaffolding which permits the scientist to arrange his data in an orderly and meaningful way. Because psychology is a systematic study, it is dependent on measurement. So psychology is a systematic study of human behavior and mental processes using measurement. Therefore, psychology is a study with a framework of identifying what is behavioral or psychological. So, pinag-aaralan dito yung principles, concepts, and theories of behavior based on the measurement of patterned behaviors. Dahil naghahanap ang mga psychologists natin ng general principles and theories na magpapaliwanag ng basis of behavior, they conduct scientific research to determine the causes of various behaviors. Thus, scientific psychology has several good characteristics. Here are the other scientific definition of psychology. One, it is systematic, formal, and objective. Ang mga psychologists natin ay sumusunod sa set of rules para ma-maintain nila ang high degree of scientific procedures. In doing so, the scientists are becoming objective in designing a study and interpreting the results. Therefore, the results should be factual and not opinionated. Second, it strives for simplicity and order. Kung magkakaroon ng dalawang results and the other one is complex and the one is simpler, the scientists will choose simplicity because the scientists insist that there is order to be the universe. Therefore, scientists or psychologists necessitate to seek system or order in behavior. Psychology is also precise. Science insists on careful measurement and on quantifying observations. Doon tayo sa sure ball na pag-aaral. Such precision is well worth the effort and time. It must have a repetition because the behaviors of the human beings are all in repetition and pattern behaviors. 
psychologists are conducted in a way that the other researchers can adopt similar procedures to see whether they produce the same results. Such replication or repetition of the research would ensure that the results are carefully verified and thus more likely to be accurate. At ang mga paulit-ulit na behaviors ng human beings being observed and experimented in psychology ay mas accurate. Ito ang mga inaabangan ng mga psychologist. It provides cumulative knowledge. Naiipon ito at in effect, yung outcome of scientific experiments are published in journals, in books, and enlighten the future scientists so that the scientific knowledge accumulates over time with latest findings and ideas buildings on an existing foundation. Scientific Development of Psychology Developments of scientific psychology place the origins of the field in Germany in the late 18th and early 19th century. The British and continental philosophers of mind and the advancement of research in sensory physiology. Sinasabing ang psychology ay nagmula sa Germany noong 18th and early 19th century. And psychology as a science started as the sensory physiology or sensory psychology. If you can still remember, Plato and Socrates, who were studying soul and human mind, this triggered the study of the mind in philosophy. And in the 19th century, development gave impetus to psychology as science. And extending the methods, this widened the field of inquiry in psychology as a discipline. So psychology as a young science started with the field of philosophy, no early philosophy pa lamang, ancient Greek philosophers, Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates. And with the influence of various fields of science, it formulated scientific methods in studying human behavior and making it psychology as a new discipline. Ang psychology ay nag-evolve from two Greek words, psyche, which means mind or soul, and logos, which is to study. Originally, psyche or suke means breath or soul, and logos refer to word or reason. So the modern meaning of psych psychology is the science of mind. So the early philosophers viewed mind as an independent, free-floating spirit. Today, psychologists associated mind with the brain as a characteristic of a functioning of the nervous system with the ultimate function is to control behavior. So, nung panahon ng mga early philosophers, ang mind ay kinoconsider as a free-floating spirit, sometimes known as the soul. Thus, the focus turned from the mind that cannot be directly observed, but only through the behavior. So, brain is organ that controls bodily behavior. Former Greek philosophers, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, translated literally psyche as soul or spirit. So, the idea of Socrates is found in his philosophy, Know Thyself or Know Yourself. Viewed as the forerunner of the introspective method analyzing oneself, with which modern philosophers gave an explanation to Sitgis' spirit of the times. Nung araw, ang tawag nila sa ganyan ay Sitgist. So, a Greek naturalism that is Christian like interpretation of soul. This soul is known as a transpatial substance or wala siyang inoccupy na space. So, ang isip ay somewhat a consciousness in and outside the universe. Plato believed that the soul existed before the body. Soul or mind is the mobilizing force of man. So, human soul is the highest level that allows formation of ideas in his intellect or rational thought na ang soul daw ay nanggagaling beyond the universe or beyond the heavens. So, ang ideas daw natin ay separated from this reality. Hindi ito nagmumula sa ating brain, but transpatial entity existing separate and apart from reality. So, knowledge existed in the soul prior to any actual experience. Bago pa man may experience ng tao, ang lahat ng bagay dito sa daigdig ay meron na pong tinatawag na ideas. So, ang ideas ng tao ay hindi experiential but innate among individuals. That's according to Plato. On the other hand, it says that Aristotle was the first real psychologist dahil 
sa kanyang natural way of describing psychological events as a natural or biological science of behavior. Sa kanyang writing na The Anima, he postulated that there is dualism of body and soul. So human beings are composed of body and soul. His detailed views on psychology were centered on the relationship between body and soul. The body receives information through senses such as vision, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. The body gives existence to essence of man, which is aptly called soul. Thus, the soul is life-giving element of a living existence. Therefore, he pointed out that the emotions are anger, coarse, and a desire as well as the sensations are functions of the soul that are acted only through the body. Thinking or reasoning is the highest function. Thus, Aristotle arrived at the three levels of remembering. Today is called loss of association as enumerated below. According to Aristotle, these are the laws of remembering. One is similarity of things. Two is contiguity or togetherness. And last is the opposites or contrast. Sinasabi ni Aristotle that similar things can be remembered easily. Contiguity or togetherness yung lagi magkakasama ay mas madaling matandaan. And even the opposite sides ay mas madaling matandaan like black or white. It is easy to remember the black because of the other word which is white. So with these philosophers, distinction between the body as a part of the world of nature and the spirit or soul which is non-spatial is clearly explained. Magkaiba ang body sa soul since the body is material and the soul is immaterial. Plotinus also conceptualized soul as a substance that exists without regard to spatiality or even without the space and separate from the body. Ito rin ay nagre-reflect sa mga writings ni St. Augustine in Christian philosophy that the soul is an inner awareness and introspection. Sabi nga ni St. Augustine, inner awareness and introspection could lead to knowing God. The implications of St. Augustine's introspectionism or looking inward created great impact in structuralism, psychoanalysis, gestalt, humanistic, and existential psychology as a systematic study of behavior. Moreover, the idea of soul of St. Thomas Aquinas is reflected in Aristotle's De Anima. According to Thomas Aquinas, the soul could only understand God and man's relation to him, not the body. The influence of philosophy develops two major viewpoints as basic ground rules of scientific psychology at ito ay ang empiricism at rationalism. Empiricism is the view that knowledge can be gathered through careful observation. The following empiricists are Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, George Berkeley, David Hume, David Hartley, Thomas Reed, Thomas Brown, James Mill, John Stuart Mill, and Alexander Bain. Rationalism is the view that knowledge can be gained through logic and careful reasoning. The following rationalists are Francis Bacon, Galileo Galilei, Johannes Kepler, Isaac Newton, Baruch Spinoza, and Rene Descartes. So, ang isa, which is empiricism, is a viewpoint that explains that we need a careful observation to gather knowledge about behaviors. On the other hand, ang rationalism naman ay nagigay ng knowledge sa pamagitan ng logic and careful reasoning. Empirical knowledge or psychology is the data of mind that resulted in observation. Rational knowledge or psychology denote the interpretation of data of empirical psychology through the use of reason and logic. Both views are characterized as using knowledge acquired through experience or empirical psychology or using knowledge that the mind possesses independent of experiences. Yan yung tinatawag nating empirical psychology or rational psychology. Empirical psychology is based on experiences and observation. On the other hand, rational psychology is based on reason and logic. Si Rene Descartes naman ay is a rationalist or a rational philosopher. He stated that all ideas are innate or inborn. Pinanganak ang tao with all ideas, innate na sa kanyang isip. His investigation on innate was expressed by him in the famous words, 
cogito or gozum, which means I think, therefore I am. He is also a scientist, a mathematician, a physiologist, and a psychologist who gave solution to the mind-body problem as to how our mental mind and physical body directly related. His solution to the mind-body problem as interactionism, that is the mind or the brain operates the body. Ang nag operate ng ating katawan ay ang isip. Based on his orientations in science, he compared the operation of human body to a machine. He viewed that animals are machines with reflexes, instincts, and other innate actions. So ang hayop ay mayroong instincts, reflexes, and other innate actions na parang kamukha ng tao, which is being operated by the mind. He presumed the nerves are hollow tubes that contained the animal spirits that he considered to be gaseous substances derived from the blood by a process of distillation or itong blood ay naging gas na nagpo-flow over and inside the nerves na nagko-contain ng animal spirits. So he thought of the animal spirits as material substances that could move very fast just like sparks shooting off from a flame. He knew on the action of the muscles operated in opposing pairs that the muscles, nerves, and other biological structures. So, ang blood circulation na nagsisend ng message para mag-move ang ating katawan and even in the sensation. And this is via the process of distillation. Well, unlike René Descartes, John Locke believed that all ideas came from experiences. So, he re reiterated the original idea of Aristotle about tabula rasa that the mind of a person at birth is analogous to a blank sheet of paper. Walang kalaman-laman ng isip ng tao kapag siya ay pinanganak. Locke's influence on specific psychology cannot be overemphasized. His disagreement with Descartes' theory that idea comes from experience, it could not be inborn. If idea was innate or inborn, it should be constant in all minds. So sinasabi niya na lahat ng ideas ay dapat nandoon or constant at hindi nagbabago kung innate ang ideas. If innate, idea should not show development. Hindi na nagbabago or hindi na nag-improve but it develops through experiences. Basically, tabula rasa could receive experiences from environment that involves the act of sensing and it could bring the process of reflection or introspection. So there is changing view and changing ideas as long as human beings are developing and improving. So, si Francis Galton naman is an Englishman who started studying behavior sa pamagitan ng mental test and the study of individual differences. So, his half-cousin Charles Darwin, who, by determining the resemblance of man from the lower animals to his theory of evolution, made the study of animal comparative psychology interesting. Darwin's theory has many implications in psychology as enumerated below. 1. It provides the basic rationale for functionalism about the psychological processes as regards value to the individual. 2. It explains all the complex biological mechanisms that underline human behavior and experience. These mechanisms of motivation, emotion, perception, memory, and thought were due to survival and reproduction of ancestors. It also provides the rationale in comparing humans and animal species, for it has adaptedness of behavior. Studies in physiology had laid the foundation of the rise of modern experimental psychology as presented below. So one is elaboration of distinction between sensory and motor nerves. Two, emergence of a sensory phenomenology of vision and touch. 3. Articulation of the doctrine of specific nerve energies. 4. Elaboration of secondary laws of association. 5. Quantitative description of the parameters affecting the movement of ideas above and below a threshold. Through physiology, nagkaroon ng elaboration ng study of modern and experimental psychology sa pamagitan ng pagpapaliwanag ng pagkakaiba ng sensory and motor nerves and also emergence ng sensory phenomenology of vision and touch. Nagkaroon din ng kaliwanagan sa doctrine of specific nerve energies, secondary laws of association, and even in the movement of ideas above and below a threshold, which could be discussed later on the next slide.
Charles Bell is a well-respected surgeon who made the distinction between sensory and motor nerves. He explained that the ventral roots of the spinal cord are responsible to motor. Okay, yun ang dahilan kung bakit tayo nakakakilos. And the dorsal roots are for sensory fibers na dahilan naman kung paano tayo nakakasense. Bell contribution is considered the first psychophysiological psychology or establishment of sensory motor paradigm as the basis of functional localization in the nervous system. Thomas Brown, on the other hand, Scottish, educated in the philosophy and medicine, his contribution involved a detailed elaboration of the secondary laws of association, which he termed suggestion. The laws explained the relative duration, strength, liveliness, frequency, and recency of the original sensations, as well as the enforcement of one idea by others, provided later learning theories with the basis to explain the quantitative parameters association. The secondary laws of association by Thomas Brown will be discussed on the next video. Johann Friedrich Harbart, German philosopher and scientist, was concerned with quantitative relationships of ideas. Ideas are arrayed in time and vary in intensity in both a static and dynamic of mind and are employed in complex mathematical equations to describe the hypothesized system of principles of interaction among ideas. At ang sikat niyang concept ay ang tinatawag na perception with which an idea is not only made conscious but assimilated to the whole complex of conscious ideas and tinatawag niyang a perceptive mass. Ang a perception ay the concept of connecting an existing idea to a new idea. John Evangelista Porcine was known for his classic descriptions of phenomena such as the change in apparent luminosity of colors in dim as opposed to bright daylight, otherwise known as Porcine effect. Ang Porcine effect ay ang pagbabago ng linaw ng kulay depende sa dilim at sa liwanag. So, tinatawag niyang Porcine effect. Ernst Heinrich Weber, a German scientist, presented an extensive research of the sensory phenomenology of tactile experience. He formulated the first quantitative law in sensory psychology derived from his name Weber's Law, coining the phrase just noticeable difference in reference to the smallest perceptible difference between two sensations that the intensity of sensation is a function of change in the magnitude of stimulus by constant factor of its original magnitude. So, the phenomenon of just noticeable difference by Weber explains only the intensity needed para malaman mo kung ano yung nagbago. Sa sensation, gaano kalakas, gaano kahina ang kailangan to identify kung ano yung nagbago o yung tinatawag ng just noticeable difference. In short, the two stimuli are not an absolute amount, but an amount relative to the intensity of the first stimulus. The stronger the initial stimulus, the greater the additional intensity needed for the second stimulus to be perceived as different in consumer psychology. If the consumption cost of petroleum products is increased by 2 centavos, it would perhaps be unnoticed because the increase is very minimal and I still would fall below J and D. However, a more than peso increase in the price of petroleum products would be noticed very suddenly by the consumers because it is a significant percentage of the initial, initial cost of the products. Mas mararamdaman ang changes or yung just noticeable difference kung mas, mas malakas ang intensity ng susunod na stimulus. Johannes Muller the father of physiology, had enunciated the law of specific energies that the mind or brain is directly aware not of stimuli in the physical world but the processes of the nervous system. Specific energies to the various senses include the qualities of vision and audition. So therefore, hindi ito nakabase sa physical world but the processes inside the nervous system. The perceived qualities of stimulation will vary on the sense organ stimulated, the nerve that transmits the excitation from the sense organ, and the part of the brain that receives the stimulation. 
So therefore, every behavior is always depending on the nervous system and not in the physical world. Muller applied Weber's discovery on the relationship to the nervous system between mind and the physical environment. In short, various nerve fibers convey specific information from one part of the body to the brain or from brain to one part of the body. So, ang behavior ng tao ay nakadepende lamang sa brain and the nervous system and the body. Next is Gustav Theodor Fechner. A physicist whose real interest in psychology was to seek a solution to the philosophical issue on mind problem. As a solution to the mind-body problem, Fechner considered Weber's discovery the possibility of relating mental events to physical events and subjective judgments about physical magnitudes. So this time, you relate naman ang physical events at ang mental events, the reason why there is also subjective judgments about physical magnitudes. Gustav used mathematics, arithmetic, and logarithmic relations between physical and subjective magnitude as basis for quantitative laws and sensory psychology. So to identify the just noticeable difference, gumamit siya ng mathematical equation at tinawag niya itong psychophysics or the new science in psychology. In the laboratory experiments of the new psychology, there was a special emphasis on sensory processes. He explained the measurements of the smallest detectable intensity o yung tinatawag niyang absolute threshold and the smallest detectable difference in intensities between stimuli o yung tinatawag niyang difference threshold for the different senses. So, Fechner had significantly contributed to the psychophysical methods, devices, in psychological experiments and researches for the purpose of testing psychophysical laws over a wide range of stimulus intensities and developing scales of psychological measurement, assessment, and evaluation. Kumuha si Gustav ng computation or mathematical equation to identify the smallest detectable intensity at yung smallest detectable difference. So, he used psychological measurement, assessment, and evaluation to identify these stimulus intensities. Through Gustav, nagdagdagan na ang ways to study the behavior using measurement and assessment and evaluation of behaviors. Hermann Ebbinghaus, a German experimental psychologist who believed that higher mental processes could be the object of experimental investigation. Thus, he employed mathematics to mental representation by a precise quantitative methods to investigate memory. Ebbinghaus developed the nonsense syllable, entirely created the consonant-vowel consonant combinations. He created syllable lists of various lengths that he learned and then later relearned after different lengths of time. The percentage of time saved in relearning the list is known as the saving method of memory. Ebbinghaus found that the amount of time spent in relearning lists was greater for longer lists and for longer retention intervals. According to Ebbinghaus, habang humahaba ang listahan ng syllables, mas tumatagal ang saving time. Ganon din ang longer retention intervals, kaya nagtatagal ang pagmememorize. Wilhelm Wand He is known as the father of modern experimental psychology. A German psychologist and physician who can be considered the first psychologist of modern psychology. His systematic approach to the new science enabled him to have separated psychology from philosophy because he established the first psychological experimental laboratory at the University of Leipzig, Germany in 1879. So, the first psychological or experimental laboratory in Leipzig was established by William Wand. Experimental psychology, as contributed by Wand, employed the methods of physiology o yung pag-aaral ng mismong katawan ng tao to study the contents and processes of individual consciousness, especially the brain. Famous Wand's laboratory conducted studies on psychophysical experiments to measure the duration of mental processes and experiments on attention, memory, and association of ideas. One cited Franciscus Cornelius Dunders, eminent physiologist who assimilated 
the reaction time taken up by the mental operations. So his American student, James Mackin Cato, expanded on Dander's method by measuring the speed of verbal associations. More particularly, he varied the number of letters, numbers, words, or sentences a stimulus card contained and exposed the card to observers in brief 0.01 second. To measure the number of items that could be contained in consciousness at one time, thus the result was an estimate of the span of attention or apprehension. Sa pamamagitan naman ni Franciscus Cornelius Dunders and James Mackin Cato at napag-aralan na ang reaction time na ginagawa ng mental operations, so measuring the speed of verbal associations and the stimulus through the eyes. So here are the significant contributions of scientific psychology. 1. The establishment of the first psychological and experimental laboratory at Leipzig. 2. Psychology was separated from philosophy and became an independent science. 3. Development of goal and objectives of psychology as a science. 4. The establishment of the schools of psychology. 5. Psychology employed different methods in the study of behavior. 6. Psychology has two divisions and branches out into different fields. Psychology as a science means the study of behavior of man and lower animal and mental processes. Behavior is any activity response of the organism. So it refers not only to the responses of organism but also to their thoughts, feelings, perception, reasoning, memories, and even biological activities that maintain their bodily activities. Other responses can be directly observed but can inferred from external behavior. And here are the goals of psychology. Psychological analysis of behavior and thought process set goals. Such goals of the psychologist are met in terms of 1. Description, understanding, prediction, and control in studying behavior. So, unahin natin yung description. Psychologists refer to the classification of behavioral data into meaningful categories. Either qualitatively on the basis of structure of traits they have in common or quantitatively on the basis of measurement of traits they have tested. So, they describe muna ang behavior through quantitative or qualitative research. Next is understanding. Explanation in behavior in terms of the underlying principles concepts and theories that can be applied for human interest and value. It recognizes that most behavior is influenced by several factors. After describing the behavior, it should be understood considering the other influences or several factors. After understanding, there should be prediction. A statement of expectation that a particular event will occur the likelihood that a certain behavior will occur a given relationship will be determined. So, as long as the patterned behavior had been discovered, described, and understood, there will be prediction of behavior. After predicting the behavior, control will happen. Achieving control of behavior is done after description, understanding, and prediction have been met. So you can just control the behavior after predicting what is the patterned behavior. The goals of psychology are describing kung ano yung behavior, understanding kung ano yung behavior, predicting the behavior, and of course after predicting the behavior, you can control the behavior. Well, it was a long discussion, so if you have any question, drop your comments below. Next time, I will be discussing the schools of thoughts in psychology. And guys, thank you for listening. God bless.